Hi, this is Doug from Advisor. I'm going to take five or ten minutes and run through how to do a prospect identification demo. I usually you know, talk through the PowerPoint slide and just click the link here, which is, opens it up on a public website. As long as you have internet connection, this will open. So this is unpacking data that was loaded the night before. It usually takes 10 to 20 seconds to load, so it's pretty quick. And then once it's up, uh, you'll have a project showing, and you can run through a scenario. And a couple of things that's really important. One is to keep the pace of the demo um, brief, but also really tell a story. Uh, it's really important to not just muck around in this and show fun facts, but highlight something somebody would want to do. So it comes up. Uh, I describe, you know, this is a project, a prospect identification project. There's a navigation pane over here, which is context uh, for the specific application. And this is to you write this in Word. It, it tells what the dimensions are. It might have some links to videos or wiki posts or whatever. Uh, I'm going to hide this for now. And then I would describe, you know, what we've got. We're looking at a prospect list page. So there's a list that has a bunch of people and some descriptive characteristics from the data. It could have a, be really wide, could scroll way off to the right with, you know, emails and phone numbers or whatever. You probably would want that because you would normally want to contact people off of this. We're looking at uh, 93,000. Uh, 39,000 are excluded because on this rating filter, the unrateds are unchecked. I can bring them back. Just check them, they come back, uncheck them, they're gone, and so forth. And then I would go through and say, so we want to, like these 55,000 people, there's a set of pages of other content about them. There's ratings, we'll go through these in a minute, staffing, map, affiliation. So our concept here is we lay out, we call this horizontal logic, a series of descriptions of who these people are. And when we run through a scenario, we will run through those pages. And so let's just try one. So a typical scenario would be, I'm trying to find major giving prospects. I wonder if there are any highly rated prospects who are also highly attached, and maybe we're going to South Florida, who live in South Florida, who aren't staffed. Good question. Um, so let's look at it. The next page is ratings. So this page is the same 55,000 people. There's a chart which shows the capacity rating, and the red ones down here are rated 50 million or more, they're quite wealthy. There's another run down, here's one to five million, here's 500,000 to a million, then over here is 25 to 50,000. So the higher capacity here, the lower capacity here. And then the second concept on this page is attachment scores. These people, owners, have been to more events, they've made more gifts, they probably higher ed, participated in student sports when they were on campus and all of that. And these people, the disconnected, basically would have graduated and fled. They haven't done anything, so they're disconnected. And we'll come back to where these get calculated from in a, in a few minutes. Uh, capacity ratings, you know, typically Wealth Engine or there's a whole bunch of vendors who can do wealth ratings. Uh, wealth Engine and Lucian, and we all partner together, so we like them. Uh, sometimes they come from other vendors. Sometimes research creates ratings on these. With our projects, if there's gaps, like not everybody has a capacity rating, we can use public information, wealth by zip code, and, and blend it in to create a score for everybody. So that's that's what we would do in building a project. So how do I use this? Uh, the scenario was the story. We want to find do I have any high capacity? And let's say we mean 500,000 or up, which would be you know these three bars over here, people. So let's grab them first, who are unstaffed, who are also high in attachment, unstaffed to live in South Florida. So I want to sweep over, left click drag the mouse across those five bars and release it. I've selected them. I've selected 6,306 people. The list changed. I'm showing how they tile into attachment. So uh, if I mouse over this, a brush up will come. You know, I've got at the top 25,000 disconnected people. A lot of them, 2,200 are high capacity, but it's only 8.7% of the group. So it's a small percentage, but still a lot of people. Over here, if I go to owners, uh, 403 out of 1546, 26% of the owners are high capacity, uh, highly engaged, 18%. So a quick check I, and it's what I expected. I'd expect to see a higher percentage of the uh, highly engaged owners also be high capacity because I'm trying to court these people. And this is uh, something's working here. That's a good sign. So let's get rid of the gray. You know, we could explore the disconnected, detached high capacity. Who are they and why are they disconnected? Because we probably don't want it to be like that, but 
Uh, we're doing this dinner in South Florida, so we want to know are any of the high capacity who are also highly engaged owners not staffed and they live in South Florida. So let's select these two bars, left click, drag over it. I've now got 1,900 people. Let's get rid of the gray. This top bar up here, this uh, control excludes the gray. Now here's a list, I've, I've gone down to this. Let's go to the next page, the staffing page. So this is the same selection, 1,900 people. I'm now looking at who is responsible for them. In, in fundraising, the primary staff or the major gift officer like salespeople, they're assigned prospects. So Megan's got a lot of them. She's got 135. You know, typically we'd like to see 75 to 125. That's a bit much. These guys are in the band. Um, these may have other people other than these high, you know, capacity, highly attached, because uh, the numbers are small. So there's obviously something filling that in. One thing that jumps is the color. Uh, all this red. What's the color? I cooked this little color legend. The dark red are the really, really high capacity, and the greens, the you know, the 500 to a million. So I've got like, this guy up here, uh, Dan Law, has uh, the really high capacity, most engaged people. So he's got a good good size pool. I hope he's really good because he's got the cream of the crop. Over here, uh, what's actually a bit surprising is a whole bunch of them on the left, we're looking at the ones who are staffed, but there's 355 who are not staffed. I wanted to get them. So I just clicked this wedge of the pie. Obviously, this goes you know, blank because there's nobody left. They get rid of the gray again drops it down to the 355. I go to the map and where do they live? Yeah, there's a bunch of them in South Florida. So I can just take the map, the mouse, left click, sweep, drag across South Florida or Florida, get that, and get rid of everybody else. And these maps drill down like where in Florida? I can click this little thing here and I'll drop the map down to Florida. You know, I can grab the guys in the east around my, I don't know what, yeah, I could sub-select sub off of this, but let's stay with what we got. Go back to the first page. Here's my 28 people who are high capacity, and I can see that here, they're all like high capacity. They're highly attached, and here's their attachment scores, highly engaged their owners, that's great. Um, they are not staff, there's no staff name, and they live in South Florida, here's where they live. They've got some other stuff on, you know, do they have a C-level job? Some of them do, some of them don't, et cetera. So at this point, I could export the list. There's a little control here. Um, if you're running off the public website, which is a demo, uh, this is going to be grayed out because we don't want people stealing our demo data, <laughs> which they probably would. But in a, in a live situation, you can then drop this down to Excel, take your list, give it to the planner for this event, and let them go. Now, uh, let's learn a little more. So we're, we're on this map page. Uh, just explore the 28. Here they are, affiliations. What are they? 11 alums, uh, some parents, spouses, partners. So these, these, you know, some they could be multiples. Obviously, this is more than 28 if you total it. So some of them are spouses, alums, and parents, all that stuff. Um, got it. Uh, undergrad, some law uh, classes of what classes? The 50s. I'm seeing some commonality here. There's a bunch in the 50s, a bunch in the 60s. So I'm planning my dinner. I might want to sit these groups together. I mean, if I want to see who was this cluster in the 60s, I could just sweep over it. There's 10. Here they are, uh, and so forth. If I want to go back and reselect, I just this undo brings me back to the state I was in before. Uh, biographical information. I'm just looking at these people, see what the patterns are. A lot of women, and uh, the high, they're really the highest capacity of people here are women. I mean, they could be spouses of an alum, whatever. But there's a lot of women. Degrees. Um, yeah, um, a bunch of parents, so they don't all have degrees, um, bachelor's, whatever. Student sports, I'm just trying to see if there are patterns in here, are there groupings? I saw class years. Um, yeah, not so much. It's like individuals, fraternities, sororities, a cluster in here. If I want to drill down on this, this shows I can drill down and go down. Which fraternities and sororities? I click this little thing at the bottom, and I get, an, I get a uh, set of things. This down arrow drops me down. Yeah, and they're all, they're not, there's no cluster. I mean, if I saw six in one fraternity, maybe they know each other. Employment, what can I learn here? We already saw there's some C-level jobs up front. A lot of financial services and the high capacity, the really high capacity ones are in that. Committees, what have they worked on? Enrollment interviewers, there's like a bunch of committee roles, different committees got it, you know, class officers, that's cool. Uh, what's their giving history? for my 28. 
So I can see on, on average the group's been going up. That's good. More gifts, higher gifts, um, but they're still way, way below their capacity. Only two six-figure donors. Um, let's just pick one. I wonder what's going on with, say, Jerry Brown. I can click Jerry in the list. So Jerry, uh, interesting. He had not been giving. Then he picked up and for like a few years was given at 4,000 a year. Then he fell off. He came back, but he's only he was only given a uh, you know, 10 to 24,000. What rating is he? He's the yellow. One to four million. So this is a one to four million capacity. Pretty engaged guy. He was given you know an average of like a thousand a year. That's probably worth something. Um, let's go back. Now I want to look at the attachment score because this is uh you know we saw the the bins is what we started on. Let's just sort this by by the score. So what's happening here um, is, is we're creating metrics out of the underlying um, database data from the different tables. Like at the entity level, we know that Nyla Baker, we look at the, we write Excel-like macros in our app, looks at the events of the committees table, and figures out in the last two years, she's been on two of them. Looks at the giving table and figures out over the last five years she's made a gift of some amount and we could put a threshold, ten bucks or whatever, in at least in all five of them. Four of the years before that, four of the five years before that, she's been to three reunions, played two sports, looked at the student activities and sports table, three activities. And there's an algorithm that figures out the weighting of these and creates the score, which then gets bin. So the the score runs from zero to one. This is the predictive modeling. Uh, it clips it like this must be like a little over a point two L. That's an owner. The others are in here. Uh, you don't have the low scores. You don't have the really high scores in this group. But an observation: when we do it this way, you know, it's really hard to to have selections on these scores. People get highly engaged. That that logic worked. But now we actually do care what makes up the score because if I look at this for this dinner, what jumps is these are ordered in terms of most influence. Uh, committees the last 10 years is the most important thing to create um, a difference between having capacity and giving and having capacity and not giving. And most of these people have never been on a committee. I mean, this guy down here has uh, Pablo, and it uh, looks like one up here, uh, Nyla, the rest have not. So if I'm organizing this dinner, I would look at this and say, I want to get these guys and gals at tables by 60s and 50s because there's clusters there. And maybe get somebody who, uh, from those same years who's on a key committee that, that, that you can figure out from degrees and employment, and maybe it's a, an economics thing because there's a lot of finance people here. Get them on a key committee. Get them connected because that will create more attachment and, and create a greater likelihood of giving. And then uh, you know, go back to the beginning, and uh, I can click this button, and it brings everybody back to my filter. Here's my 55,000. This restores and reselects everybody. So that's a quick run through. Uh, a couple of just summary points. It's important to, you know, not get bogged down. It's really important to have a story, uh, and the easiest story is that one. I wonder if there are any highly high capacity, highly engaged people who aren't staffed who live in South Florida because my VP is going there. And if so, who are they, and how might we organize the event? And then run through just this descriptive stuff and over here the attachment scores. It gets into how we do predictive modeling, which is fundamentally simpler than almost anything else out there. And the beauty of this is this thing installs on a, on a system and it updates daily from the database. So all of these scores, I'm like, if it gets farmed out to a consulting firm and gets done once a year, these get updated daily. So if go back to those scores, if some of those people got on a committee made another gift, you know, you come in on Monday, their score is going to jump and they're going to be put in a different bucket perhaps. So that's the beauty of this. Uh, thanks for your time and uh, good luck demoing.